to our lab. Are you ready for some incredible experiments? I've never seen this happen before. We're getting gross. Oh, Chris! We're going big. The bones are not buckling. And dangerous. <laughs> Remember, we can only do these experiments because we're doctors. Don't try this at home. Today, we're looking at the blood in your brain. What was that? What are you doing? Oh, sorry, Chris. I'm so hungry. I haven't eaten anything for hours. Well, an hour. I wanted to see how loud my tummy rumblings would get. Don, we've got no time for that. I have started an experiment about our blood. Ooh, <laughs> well, tell me all about it while I drink one of these. No, uh, 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 uh. I've made exact five litres, which represents the amount of blood you have in your body when you're fully grown, which you are. Well, good work, Chris. That really is a lot of smoothies. I mean, blood. And did you know that 20% of the blood that's pumped from your heart goes to your blender? Sorry, sorry. I've got smoothies on the blender. I mean, the brain. The brain is the answer, Chris. Yeah, not the blender. And this is because your brain needs a constant supply of oxygen and glucose, which are taken from your blood as it flows through the tiny blood vessel network. Now, I know a way we can see those. We need to do an MRA scan of your brain, Chris. Get in the cupboard of everything. All right. Now, I need a straw for these smoothies. No touching my smoothies. MRA stands for Magnetic Resonance Angiogram. It's a scan that takes detailed images of the blood vessels in your body. But today, we only need it for my brain. Son, what are you up to? I'll with you in a second. Now, this is a Magnetic Resonance Angiogram of my brain. And the white, wiggly lines you can see throughout, those are my blood vessels. And they're carrying blood and reaching every single one of the 100 billion or so nerve cells that are in the brain tissue. There are over 650 kilometers of tiny blood vessels in the brain, which is the same length as... Zod, <laughs> you're a genius. You have the same amount of blood vessels in your head as the length of 3,095,238 of these straws. Well, Zod, that was very helpful, and I would say you have earned yourself a delicious smoothie. Enjoy that. Ah, Chris, this has juicy bits in it. I'm very picky about my smoothies, a bit like your brain, which is very picky about what it wants from your blood. It is very picky because in your blood are some things that would be really bad for your brain, so it has its own filter system. In hospital, it's not just the doctors and nurses who help to get you fixed. There are lots of other heroes working behind the scenes. Ah, yes! What will happen when we have a go at their amazing jobs? Useless. This is Operation Takeover. When you're a patient, life can be a bit boring, so it's important to keep upbeat and entertained on the wards. Today's hospital heroes help with that. They are Radio Lollipop DJs Dom and Chaminda. They're hosts on the Evelina Children's Hospital radio station, which broadcasts just for the patients to cheer them up and reduce stress, which is good for health. It is Thrilling Thursday. I'm really excited. We have some very special guests coming in later. <gasps> I think they're talking about us, Chris. Let's say hello. Are we live now? Absolutely. Yes. Hi, kids. So, what is it like? doing hospital radio. It's great fun. The children love it as well, and if they're having fun, then we have the most fun. As a kid, being in hospital is not the most exciting place to be, so it takes them away from the whole hospital environment. What I want to know is what are the ingredients of a really good radio show? I reckon you guys should go upstairs on some awards, find out firsthand from our listeners what makes a really good radio show. That's a brilliant idea. OK, let's hit the wards and get... The top three tips to being a hospital radio show host. In at number three... Try to be funny a little bit. Good luck with that one, Zand. Oi, what's at number two? Do you get singing? Do you think that the DJ should sing, or do you think we should just play the records? Sing. Really? Uh-oh. And finally, top of the charts is... Don't embarrass yourself. That's easy for me. A little bit less easy for doctors aren't. Thanks, Toller. And thank you, Summer. 
So we found out just how important the job of hospital radio host really is. But have we got what it takes to be on the same wavelength as the real professionals? Get it? Wavelength? It's time for us to be hospital radio hosts. So your challenge today is to take over the airwaves for 10 minutes each. And then we want to see how you handle a special guest. Right, this should be trivial. And I have a special guest in mind who I think will give me an enormous advantage. I don't have a guest. Where am I going to get a guest? Better go find a guest. I have a professional DJ as my guest. It's Radio 1 Extra DJ Yasmin Evans. And I am going to thrash Dr Zand as a result. Not so fast, Chris. Meet the judges. They're tuned in, ready to pick a winner. Who's the best? They decide. Bring it on. I'll go first. What time is it? It's Dr Christoph! <laughs> Hospital Radio's number one Operation Ouch-based show. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Dr Chris show. I have with me Yasmin Evans. How are you, Yasmin? I'm very well. How Good. are you? I thought I'd been really clever inviting you along because you could really help me out. And yes. In fact, it's just piled and piled on the pressure. I first go as a DJ. I'm going to hit play. I'm going to turn these up. And now we can hear Justin That's Bieber. Justin Bieber. We're talking over it. But can they still hear us? They can take us down. Oops. I wonder if anyone noticed. It's a good job Yasmin's here. This is a nightmare. Chris has already got a guest and I don't have one. Where am I going to get a guest at such short notice? OK, I'm going to try and work the screen. I'm sorry, everyone listening. I hope I'm not losing the judges. Oh, that's Nick no, Jonas. That's Nick Jonas. Ah, there's so many buttons. I got that. Thank goodness Zahn still doesn't have a guest. Hang on, I've spotted someone. It's Laverne the housekeeper. Can I, can I stop you cleaning? Will you be a guest on my radio show? Oh, I'll think of it. You'll be all right? Yep. Come on, then, come with me. Okay. Off we go. Phew, just in the nick of time. And for all the judges out there, I guess I want to leave you with the thought um, how much better this has been than Dr Zand <laughs> is going to be. Thanks a lot, everyone. <laughs> Bye. I must say, that is, it's phenomenally stressful. Give me five. Beat that, Zand. Over to you. Hey, everybody, it's Dr Zand. Oh. One thing's for sure, I'll give it a go. It's time for Dr Zand's amazing radio show! This is Dr Zand, and let me tell you, I'm going to make your eardrums burst. No, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. OK, that'd be bad. I'm going to give you dandruff. How about that? See, Chris? I can be funny. If you say so. We have an incredible guest. The world famous, the one, the only, Laverne Lodrick. Laverne, how are you doing? Hi there, Doctor. Good evening. I'm going to play some relaxing music. How's that going? <laughs> the judges wanted singing. Because I'm down for you. Yes, but you are 100% embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's the food like in the hospital? Well, I've never tasted the patient food. <laughs> <laughs> never stolen food off a, off a, a poorly oh, child. No, no. That's a do. bad thing to no. do. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I have done that occasionally. What? You can't do that. You're wonderful. Good night, everyone. Bye bye. Time to admit defeat, Chris. Let's get the verdict. So, guys, tell us who the winner is. 4 <laughs> 1 in your face. You love me. You really do love me. So, judges, what did you like about my show? It was a little bit more funny. Well, it wasn't really you, it was more of your um, specially guest. <laughs> Ha! Huh, you got lucky, Zand. Well, we've seen just how important the job of radio hosts like Dom and Chaminda are to the running of the hospital. And although I did a lot better than you, according to the listening public, I think it is best left to the experts. Have the headphones back, guys. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Ouch. We're on call with the UK Emergency Services, showing you what it's really like on the front line saving lives. The West Midlands Ambulance Service is on standby all day, every day, to respond to emergencies. I'm hitching a ride in this rapid response vehicle so you get to see up close what it's like to be first on the scene. On call with me is paramedic Jan Van. She can do 20 emergency call-outs in a day. 
and a new case is just in. We've been called to see a 44-year-old lady, and at the moment, the suspected diagnosis is a stroke. And that means that she's potentially got a blocked blood vessel in her brain. If you act quickly, you can get a much better result than if you wait. So we need to get there fast. Minutes later, we arrive at the address. Inside, Jotty is in shock. She's lost feeling down one side of her body and has no idea why. And suddenly it started going all numb. On the, on the left side of your face, OK. And then I started going down, 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 then my husband pulled me back up. So you started slumping in the chair, did you? Yeah. I'm going to do a few checks on you. If it is something serious, like if it is a stroke, which obviously we're all concerned about, it can be managed and it can be treated, OK? So Jotty has high blood pressure and she's got diabetes. And both of those things make having a stroke a little bit more likely. Can you feel me touching it? I feel that side. Can you not feel this side? Not much, no. So what Jan's doing now is assessing how well Jotty's nerves in the brain are working. And all that will tell us whether or not there's a problem in her brain and how quickly she needs to get to hospital. This numbness in this side of the face is not normal. So I would like to get you checked over at the hospital just to make sure that it's not like the start of, of anything like a stroke. So one of the most difficult parts of Jan's job is not just making medical decisions, but also dealing with people, trying to persuade people who are frightened of hospitals that maybe it's a good idea to go in and to explain to people what's wrong and that's what she's doing there. So what I'll do is I'll arrange for the ambulance to come, but I'm going to stay with you the whole time, OK? 5157, just amber back up, please. By the time the ambulance crew arrive, Hiya. Jotty's mood has lifted, thanks largely to the expert care she's received from Jan. She even manages a little joke. Why, why do you think you're feeling better? Do you handsome men like you? <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, don't make Sorry. their heads any bigger than they already are. Are we going to the opticians? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so Jotty's now in the ambulance and she's about to go to hospital where she'll get the treatment that she needs. She's laughing and joking, she's much more relaxed. It's a really good result for the emergency services. Meet Caden, Maisie, Bolu, and Millie. We'll be following them across the series as they let us know what it's like to be a regular hospital outpatient. They invite us into their lives at home and as they undergo treatment. Meet 12 year old Bolu. Hello. I have sickle cell anemia. Everyone has red blood cells, but with sickle cell patients, we have red blood cells and sickle blood cells. Normally, red blood cells are shaped like round discs. They can squish up and slide down a blood vessel carrying oxygen with them. But with sickle cell anemia, some cells are shaped like crescent moons or sickles. They're not very good at carrying oxygen, so Bolu gets tired and short of breath. Plus, they often get stuck, causing problems like pain and clotting. When I'm doing activities that my friends do, I can get tired easily. But cooking is one thing that doesn't tire Bolu out. <laughs> if you have a condition and you can't really do something as well as the other kids, you know that you can cook. You just feel like you're the best at something for once. Thumbs up. Can you guess what Bolu's favourite colour is? My room is literally pink. It's everything is pink. When you're sick and you don't feel well and you feel gloomy and down and miserable, when you think about the colour pink, you just forget about everything and wanna dance all day. Find out how you get on next time. Bye. Your body is brilliant. It can even repair itself if you get injured as this next boy will show you. There's a bone to break, he'll break it. There's a knee to graze, he'll graze it. If there's an ankle to sprain, he'll sprain it. He's the unluckiest kid. Oh, another accident. He really is unlucky. If you cut your skin, lots of tiny blood vessels tear and bleed. But straight to the rescue are an army of platelets. They stick together like glue. This is called clotting, and it makes a plug to stop the bleeding. Then, a protein called fibrin holds everything together with fibres, a bit like scaffolding. The clot dries out and goes hard, forming a scab to keep bacteria out like a bouncer. 
Sorry, mate, you're not on the list. Mm. New skin cells start to gather. Meanwhile, the heavyweights, infection-fighting white blood cells, constantly patrol the area fighting infection. Your new skin starts connecting to your nervous system and it gets all itchy because your skin knows there's something there you need to get rid of. But don't pick it. Wait for your scab to fall off. Oh, dear. He's the unluckiest kid. Earlier, Henry had to take a trip to accident and emergency. Let's see how he's getting on. Back in Sheffield, Henry's had a bad fall and is in a lot of pain. Henry and his best friend Barnaby were mountain biking on some very steep trails. Henry did a huge jump and got some properly big air. But he found himself heading straight for a tree, so he bailed from his bike and landed Superman-style on the ground. Ouch! Accident and emergency doctor Chris Young is now calling in a specialist surgeon to check Henry out. Meet Giampiero Socorzo. Dr. Giampiero is a specialist and he's checking out Henry's internal organs. Oh, that hurts. That hurts quite a lot. We need to do a special investigation, a CT scan of his abdomen. So this time it's not a simple X-ray. The doctors are worried about Henry's internal organs and need to take a closer look. A CT scanner is a special kind of X-ray machine. Several X-rays are sent at the same time from different angles. This allows more detailed images to be seen of Henry's sore tum. Dr. Giampiero is soon checking out the results. As you can see here, this is the CT scan. And everything looks fine. Just a hematoma. A hematoma is a bruise, and that's why Henry was in pain. Nothing serious. Good results. I can move now, whereas before I was sort of suspended. I want to go home and see my brothers and the dogs. OK, Henry, take care on your mountain bike. Bye. Bye.